Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm in the panic room and I'm going to show you guys how to do this vintage 1950s short hair look. So I have really short hair. I recently cut it. It's about to my shoulders. I have very fine thin hair. So my hair tends to curl and it goes up. like I lose all my length when I curl my hair. So for those of you who have thicker hair or maybe more coarse hair, your hair won't get this length just by curling it. It might go a little lower. So you might have to get it cut a bit shorter. So this is about three days without a wash. So I'm kind of well into my wet set. Um, every night I sleep in rollers and I do recommend sleeping in rollers to create this look because I've never been able to actually create this exact look with um, hot rollers or curling my hair when it's clean. I have another video where I show you guys how to use the rock and rollers and that's how I actually achieved this look. So I just have my rock and rollers here and these ones are fairly old. They're pretty well loved. Um, they are a little on the skinnier side but I find that when you have shorter hair and you're creating a shorter hair vintage look, the skinnier ones are going to help you a lot better. I've also used pin curls in the past but the pin curls don't give me the volume that I'm looking for. So I find that the rock and rollers do work the best for that. I also found that a good way to get the volume up on top is sleeping in these vintage pink sponge rollers you can get from the dollar store. So when I use them, I wrap them really tight just on the crown here and in the bang area. And then I use the rock and rollers to create the curl on the bottom. When you use just the rock and rollers by themselves and you create the curls on the bottom, you will lose all your volume on top. So depending on what you look for and what your preference is, you're going to have to create your roller set depending on that. If you like a lot of volume up here, you're going to um, layer the curlers and put little bits of hair there. For me personally, I don't have enough hair to do that. So I just create curls along the bottom with the rock and rollers and I do a couple crown rollers with the sponge rollers. That way it's easy to sleep in them and I also get the volume that I'm looking for. Also a handy tip if you find that you have very greasy hair in the morning and you do want to create a nice look that lasts throughout the week, um, spray your dry shampoo in at night after you put your rollers in and sleep in the dry shampoo. That way it absorbs oil overnight. And then if you're looking for a little more texture in the morning, feel free to spray a little bit more or if you're finding that there's a couple parts that are still greasy, use the dry shampoo again. Just give another good spray. I do that quite a bit and by the end of the week I have so much product in my hair. My hair is super nasty but then I give it a couple good shampoos in the shower and it's good to go for another wet set. Well without further ado let's begin. Starting off with the rock and rollers you can see them all around the bottom there and they all have a little bit of hair in them so I'm just going to unsnap them and pull them out. I don't want to um, comb the curl out just yet. I just want to let it kind of see where it's hanging and what the integrity of the curl is. So I'm going to do that and um, just kind of take a look. You can see they're all the way around so I'm going to pull them all out and then we're going to start with the pink curler. Now I'm taking out the pink curler. It's wound really tight and then I'm just going to fluff it with my hands and then make an overall note of how things are laying before I start my brush out. So now I have my brush and I'm just going to start paddling the brush, the hair down um, just to kind of let the ends fluff out a bit. Because there's a lot of leftover product and this hair is a little dirty, it's going to have a lot of texture and it's going to fluff up very quick. Um, and also I'm going to take that bang piece and I'm just going to kind of fluff it up and just see where it lays as well. I'm taking the back part and I'm just going to brush it down because that's where I'm going to actually start to do a little bit of back combing with uh, my back comb. I'm spraying a little more dry shampoo in because I'm noticing it has a couple of greasy spots that aren't going to back comb very well. This is also going to act, act, add a little texture and I'm also going to spray at the ends of the hair because it's going to help keep that curl nice and fluffy. So now it looks a little crazy which is, you know, pretty normal for me. Um, and yeah, now we're going to section that back part and I'm going to start back combing it in sections. I'm sectioning right before my ear and I'm going to pull that forward because that little part there is a bang piece and the other half is just going to lay nice and flat against my head. But I really want to make sure I add a, quite a bit of volume to the back of the head so it doesn't give me such a helmet-like appearance. I'm sectioning small little parts of the back part there and I'm going to over direct it over the face and start to back comb it. 
Um, so when I back comb, I like to just give a couple little quick teases at the root and then leave it. Because there is so much product in there already, it doesn't need a ton of structure because it's already going to take, it's got a lot of grit, so it's going to hold um, that back comb already pretty well. And then I'm going to comb it back to smooth it, but yet keeping the ends nice and fluffy. So I'm going to try not to overly um, paddle it down. And now you'll see that I'm going to start sculpting it with the paddle brush. Now I don't recommend using a paddle brush for everybody's hair, but because mine is so intensely gross right now, it's really going to um, hold that curl no matter how much I manipulate it. So now I'm just going to start combing it out under to create a like a flip out effect. So you can watch me now, I'm combing it under towards my chin on this side. It's going to um, sculpt that curl a bit more so it gets a better shape and then I kind of fluff it with my hands before I spray it. The other side, I'm actually going to comb it outwards so that it's a little more fluffy, so when I pin it close to my head or spray it close to my head, whatever I choose to do, it's going to have a lot of volume. Wherever you direct that paddle brush, that's where the hair is going to actually sit. Taking a firm hold hairspray, I'm going to start spraying the hair into place, and I'm going to use my fingers to sculpt what I need to sculpt and keep it where I like it. This is a hairstyle that's very shellacked down, so if you like really fluffy, movable hair, this isn't the hairstyle for you, and nor is a lot of vintage styles because a lot of them are very sculpted. And then once you kind of get enough product in there, it's gonna actually just hold itself. And because I have very fine hair, it does a lot of the work for me. And now I'm just going to kind of comb the side part down, and then I wanna fluff out those ends so it kinda of keeps a lot of volume, but yet it's kinda of pulled away from my face so it pulls the face forward a bit more. Thanks for watching my hair tutorial on short hair for pinup looks. Um, please stay tuned for more tutorials and have a great day, like and subscribe.